Hello, ladies and gentlemen, the Moline Gardner Show. Make a final adjustment. Pull himself right in the center there. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Morning Gardening Show, and this is a discussion this evening. Going to talk a little bit about gardening. Going to talk a little bit about saving money. And going to talk a little bit about, you know, things we have to do in our day-to-day -day lives and how we can make that work. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I put some seeds outside, excuse me, seedlings outside a couple of days ago. Had a, had a situation where I fell asleep. It happens. If it happens to you, don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it. Just remember that it happens. I fell asleep. I had it in a cool place, the seeds, and turned out the plants got a little cooked under the sun. And the ones that were oh, the, major, uh, the ones that were mainly damaged were uh, peppers that were really, quite frankly, it's a little early for them to be outside. Uh, they didn't have their true leaves yet, but I knew that, and I, I took a chance. I said, let's try it. Um, but um, uh, some of them are still surviving. Uh, all I did was replant. Uh, got that done today. I said, I have uh, here in Maryland, we got, let's see what we got here. Um, the, the, the What we're looking at is I started some seedlings today, which... Um, that gives me about actually two and a half weeks before the frost, the frost ends. And so uh, I always wait two more weeks uh, to be certain that the frost has ended. Now, that being said, it gives me back at least about three, three and a half weeks. So as I said before, I'm, I'm still on point. Um, and, and, and keep in mind, I didn't lose all the peppers, um, but I lost, you know, some of the peppers. Now, I did another tray, and this time, the tray I did, I actually took the time out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I took the time out to actually label the the seeds. I label them because, I mean, you know, what I did early was getting off work, tired. I, I planted everything up, and I didn't label anything. So that being said... You know, it it uh, made it a little difficult once they got to grow on because, you know, all of them look alike. Seedlings, that is. Um, I did um, a beautiful, a beautiful tray. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, morning guard. I had a beautiful. And I, I'm so happy about it because it, it turned out really good. Uh, I like to see a pretty now. That's something I like to see is a pretty well arranged um, uh, seed tray, and uh, so it's all set. Seeds are in. I got jalapenos. I got banana peppers. Oh, by the way, banana peppers are my favorite. One of my favorites. Oh God, I love them things. I've been buying them at the grocery store like crazy here lately. Banana peppers. I've been buying them like crazy, and now. Uh, I, I'm just going to grow them, you know, because uh, I, I'm just so, folks, if you take a look at some of my videos, uh, when you get a chance, once this goes offline, of course, if you, if you don't mind, um, you'll see that uh, none of us, you know, we grow these, these plants, we're not perfect. Uh, no one, if they think they know everything is to know about these plants, uh, God be with them. That's all I got to say. All right. Good evening. Good evening to you as well. Hello. 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 I love it when people stop in. Um, and this is the first person coming in, in into the room today. That is beautiful. Uh, second thumbs up. Thank you very much. We're going to talk about real stuff today. We're just going to get um, really into uh, how we can make uh, our plants do what we need them to do. We don't need to be failing. Um, and we're going to make some mistakes. So you want the mistakes to be minimal. And remember, like I said, early part of what I was saying, talking to everyone uh, some months ago, 
I say grow as much as you possibly can. This is not a joke. This is not a rehearsal. Make sure you got enough food for your family and yourself this year. Please do that. Family, please do that. Um, and I want you to do that because it's going to make a big difference. This is going to be like a game changer, so to speak. Um, we are in a state of emergency and we want to make sure we have enough food. Because it's going to get real funky this year. Thank you for the thumbs up. I got three thumbs up. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Um, so I got everything I need now. All the supplies are bought. I now keep going back and forth to the stores to see if there's anything else I need. There's nothing else I need. I got uh, great fertilizers. I got great compost. Um, uh, my seeds are all just, you know, they're, they're there. And they're ready to go. Um, and I got some started and I'm just constantly just looking at things, reevaluating things and, and starting things as needed. Um, what can I say? I mean, I got, I got two small raised beds. I'm thinking about putting in some beets. Uh, I might go ahead and do that because I keep thinking about it. So I might, might as well go ahead and do it. I like to grow things that are easy, 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 easy to grow. That's what I like to do. Put that put that uh, that manure in that garden and let that stuff start feeling feeling healthy. That's what you want to do. I got I got plenty of uh, uh, fertilizer, so let's make it do what it do. I fed my trees yesterday, all of my fruit trees, uh, and it rained today, so it's gonna they're gonna wash that uh, down into that ground, and it's gonna be all set to go. What do you fertilize with? That is a good question. I fertilize with a lot of different things. Uh, let's see. I fertilize with, um, I, I do some home brews, which I call home brews, which is teas made from weed, weed, weed and grass. Uh, that will save you a ton of money. You know, just put it in a water and um, uh, just simply let it sit for about three weeks. And then um, set it away from your neighbors, of course, because they, they, you don't want the tick off your neighbors uh so after three weeks you mix it down one part to ten parts water and you water it just about anything with that it's great for great for fruit trees uh great for bushes uh great for vegetables etc cetera, etc cetera. it does a good job um now sometimes if you if you do catch me using something from a bag uh i got it for nothing and that's the reason why i bought it because i might not feel like mixing up a um a brew at the time. You know, you know, you have days like that. You don't feel like mixing things up. I'm not selling this, folks. That's why I'm going to turn the label around this way. This is a four pound bag. It says four pounds right here. This is tomato and vegetable um, uh, uh, fertilizer. And normally goes about six, maybe seven dollars in some place if they can get you to pay that. This sucker here cost me a dollar twenty five. Dollar twenty five. And, and I bought all of them that was in the shelf. Uh, sometimes I make my own calcium from eggshells. See, this is from eggshells. This is a really good fertilizer, but you got to put it in the early part of the year. You can't put it right in there uh, as soon as the weather is warm and then think this is going to break down and be uh, accessible to your plants because it may not be. So you put that in. That's eggshells. It's about uh, about pound and a half, maybe two pounds here. And it cost me zero dollars. So you can do that with your eggshells. Don't do like some people do and wash out your eggshells and, and, and bake them and all that kind of stuff. Just let them dry and then put them in the food, uh, the blender and blend it down to a powder. And that's it. You might want to wear a mask because it's, it's pretty dusty coming up out of the machine once you start grinding, grinding this stuff down. I love it, folks. We're family. We're doing this thing. I got two people in the room that stepped up and talked. Two people that came in and said, good evening, and boom. But now, all right, uh, let's see. What do you fertilize with? Okay. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't mind sharing that because uh, I want to see everybody be successful in the garden. Uh, I don't want them going out there buying all kind of crazy stuff. Now, this right here is a fertilizer I got. Um this stuff stinks here, and it is uh, organic, 
O O M R I. That's a, that's some uh, listed. Okay, for organic use, that's what it's for. Uh, these usually go for about six dollars ninety five cent. I cleared the shelf on those. Um, needless to say, I collect fertilizers that I find absolutely great deals on. I will not pay a big amount of money for no fertilizer. I, I don't believe in that religion. Okay, uh, let's say, what do you fertilize with? Uh, let's say, uh, good evening. I like to come in and say good evening, and that's how you do it. Uh, let's people know you've been raised. You've been raised. Let's people know that. All right, let's see. We got, let's see. Um, let's say, what do you fertilize your trees with? Okay, hold up. Let me get back to you. I'm gonna get. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, I, I gave you. I gave you the the the, uh, the fertilizer for that, which was uh, the liquid fertilizer. I use that for my trees, and it does a great job. Plus, it's free because you can't afford to uh, uh, fertilize all them trees unless you got a pocket full of money. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see, good evening. I just uh, drove home, so uh, difficulty. Uh, to text, let's see, text is nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you as well. Very nice to meet you. I am the morning gardener, just in case somebody wanted to know, or might might have, might have be first time here. I appreciate you. Remember to subscribe because I come on every every single uh, week, uh, Lord willing, uh, Monday, 6 p.m., and Wednesday, 6 p.m. And I try to give information out. Then I got those shows where I just dot in. I come in one evening. You won't even know I'm there. And I like going by and stopping on other people's shows and, and saying hello. And the people at the show be going crazy. They be hitting me and hitting me and hitting me and saying, hey, Napoleon. Hey, hey, Morning Garden. Hey. And I, and I appreciate that very much. It's showing love. I appreciate it. Hello. How you doing, Backyard Gardener? Stopped in and checked out your show uh, uh, a few times. I love it. I like it. It's a good show. It's a good show. I am... Uh, interested in trying out new things in the garden. Um, everyone's familiar with the new uh, planting technique that uh, I've been using online. I didn't I didn't say anything about it for the longest time because I want to make sure it was very effective. Uh, but simply just sprinkling the seeds on top of the surface. Uh, I'm going to see more people using it. I already know it. I saw one gentleman, uh, Nature not uh, Nature Nine Nature Nine. Uh, God, I can't get. To, uh, it's ah, I feel so bad. Uh, Nature Nine. And family, um, nature nine and family got it out of my mouth that time. Uh, he used it online, told everybody about it. I appreciate what he did. Uh, then you got the uh, you got the bull that comes in the room. He uh, might use certain things that I uh, you know might suggest, or or he might uh, just give a shout out because he and I go way back. Uh, and I appreciate that. Appreciate it. And the only the channels they doing this sort of thing. Uh, let's see. And and so everything is set. All the thing I have to do now is be patient and remember, like we talked about early part of it, don't fall asleep and leave your seedlings outside uh, to harden off uh, when you first take them out there. Because if I were was about, hmm, if I was awake, I would have let them stay out there no longer than about a half an hour the first the first day, more about, about an hour the next day, and and so on. And you do that for about three four days, and then you get them hardened off. Then you put them outside and leave them. But here's what I'm thinking here. Um, you can start your hardening off outside. You got your seedlings, uh, you know, just put a fan on them and, and let it blow across them and set on medium and let it blow across them. And that will help harden off your plants. I mean, that's how that works. Hardening off is simply a process of putting it out in nature and let it get, you know, pushed around a little bit by the wind and also feel the temperatures and also the um, the lighting outside is a little different than what you can supply. And that's how it works. Seven thumbs up. Thank you very much, good people. Thank you. That let me know people are feeling me. They're feeling me, family. You're feeling me. I appreciate that. I got my channel set up to, to any videos of anybody's that they post. It pops up on my thing. I mean, I have over 400 and some odd uh, gardeners already on the... So when they do something, I, I see it. Ah, ah that's good stuff. And so that's how I do it. That's how I do it, folks. Everything set to go. Is right now in Maryland we have, we have. I heard a. No, that wasn't a sub pump. That was a plane above. Um, 
that the um, everything looks good. I'm thinking about the the rain. We had some rain today. I got home before it started raining, actually. You know, um, and when I got home, I was just happy because I said, "Thank God, I didn't get caught out into in the rain." Um, but um, you know, I'm I'm just feeling good. I mean, everything looks good. And the the thing about it is all my plants are planted out. My my number one pro, uh, product I got to get out is the peppers. The peppers must survive because peppers are expensive. Peppers are nutrition. Tr nutrition. You, you, you want to make sure that they survive and do well. And that's how you do with peppers. All right. That's, that's a really good deal with the peppers. Uh, so I, I did them pretty good. Peppers are done very well. Uh, there will be a video a video going up later. Hello, how you doing, Miss Miller? Hello, how you doing? That's Miss Sue Miller, folks, and she is is a as a hardcore uh, gardener, hardcore. Yes, um, and so we are in a situation now where we 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 need to grow food now, and we must grow food now. Once family, we must grow food now. Uh, it's not necessarily a situation where uh, it's just a hobby anymore. It's just not. Uh, thanks for the thumbs up. Um, it's not just a hobby anymore. No matter what, you know, they're trying to push across. It. Don't grow your food. We, we got a big grocery store up the street. We'll, we'll make sure you have food. Don't you worry. Just come on by the grocery store. We got you. Yeah, you got us all right. You got us all right. Definitely got us. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I did for very well this year. The only thing I planted so far is, uh, potatoes. Potatoes are out there right now in the rain. They've been fertilized very well. Um, they've been fed and they're doing great. Um, now I may add, um, I may add a bit more fertilizer to them, uh, because, um, potatoes are heavy feeders. Uh, and when I did it, I was, you know, in a certain frame of mind and I did it a certain way and it does affect how you garden, depending on what mood you're in. Um, a lot of people uh, follow videos when they go to gardening and they they try to follow. It's kind of like you want to get information from a reliable gardener that knows what he or she is doing, uh, because everyone is, is showing you things on YouTube. That's one great thing about YouTube is that you can get information within seconds from other people. Um, and here, the uh, morning gardener, I, I give you the benefit of 21 years of gardening experience. And I made all the mistakes. I've done it all. I've done it all. Every mistake you can think of, I've done it. So now I have like basically success when I do things because I understand uh, that the very nature of a lot of plants, they, they're just basically just like we are. They're just like we are. They like warmth. They like, they like comfort. They like food, uh, sunlight. And they're just like we are. So keep that in mind when you grow on things uh, up there in, in the neighborhood, folks. All right. Everybody's saying good evening and hello to everyone. I appreciate that. I'm just looking over there because my camera's in the way of me actually seeing the information. I see I am concerned about one of my Uh, yeah, yeah. Any anytime you you see any human being or any corporation uh, purchasing up every bit of a resource, yeah, they're trying to control it. There's no simple way around that. Um, I, I saw a ship one time uh, on a video, and it was the video was very in depth. It was by a company uh, Mitsubishi. You can go look it up if you like. And they were they were buying up all of these fish that were. Um, uh, God, I want to, I, I can't think of the name of the fish, but the fish anyway, they get about like three, 400, 600 pound fish. Um, and um, I think it was tuna. I won't, yeah, I think it was tuna. And the, uh, you time out. Okay, food grid, grid, grid. Okay, okay, gotcha, food grid. Yes, time 
to get off of the food grid. Time to get off of it. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm thinking about the, the tuna and they were buying up and, and they said they had the most sophisticated tracking equipment ever created. They said they could find a pin on the ocean floor inside of a crevice. That's how accurate it is. And they could find, and they, they were chasing these fish around and they were catching them and they were just, um, I mean, this, this net would come up and it would be all these 300, 400 pound animals in it. And they would take them in quick flash freeze and they would take them to auctions where people were auctioning off the fish. Um, but uh, Mitsubishi was controlling it because they had like tons of fish like this on these massive ships that were the size of like a football stadium. And they were just collecting fish and they do it every single day. And they say they're, 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 they're artists at it. They're not just guessing at it. Uh, but the other countries are concerned about how they're doing this because the fish that swim from one side of the ocean to the other side of the ocean, once they come into their area, they just, they just grab them up. Um, uh, they were, they were killing sharks. They were killing everything that within, within their, their, their radar. They, they, they didn't care. And they were cutting off the sharks dorsal fins because there's a certain market for that. And they would drop it back in the water without dorsal fins. And it would just simply drown huge nine footers that were just dropped over the side and, and, uh, and, and left to just die. Um, and I thought that was really sad, you know, because of what they were doing. They were, they were huge animals, other animals that, uh, th that they weren't going after, but they were caught in these nets that just drowned. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, it was just incredible. It was just the, the massive nets folks. We're not talking about something that, a couple guys can handle. We're talking about nets that would just stretch out until it was just, they would just drag it by and it would catch whatever it catch. Um, but they knew where the fish were. The fish could not hide. Was it was a thing I got on. They would go after these fish with these massive ships and they would just, I mean, it was like a big vacuum cleaner vacuuming up dust from the ocean. It was just taking up everything. And it was just, it was just really sad. Um, now, if they do that, with controlling food uh if you ever want to deal with a person and control them you would first control their food supply then you would control their communication and that's what you would do and you would own them literally you would own them and that's how that would that's how that would be done you wouldn't you would not have to worry about them because once you control the food supply they will come to you on their hands and what yeah, absolutely, because you got to eat. I mean, you know, I, I go fishing and it, I would hate to think that people out there using gill nets to, to uh, catch up all the uh, rockfish uh, because they just want to do it. They take it all across the lines and it sell them because they say, well, if we get them over here. We pay nothing for the fish. We take them over here and sell them at really marked up prices. And that's how they would do it. Um, but I digress when I think about you growing your own food and I know it's a state of emergency and I know that it's important. Um, I'm going in stores. I'm seeing seeds in there now. I'm seeing seeds. You are not going to see that in another few weeks. You will not see that people are going to do this. It's gardening time. And that's what they're going to do. And the stores, are, are definitely, uh, packed up. They don't have as many seeds on the floors as they once had. I've been to uh, a number of stores in my location, uh, big stores like Walmart, and they do not have the seeds like they once had. They just don't. Um, it has been due to the pandemic. They did not have enough people working that could get the seeds numbers of the seeds out like they you normally would. The prices of the seeds have definitely went up. I've seen that. Um, uh, the same guy is pushing because of financial interest. Yep, I can see. I can see your point. I mean, this this guy or his group that he's with is, is he has massive wealth, so he says I, I can buy what I want. And when you do that, uh, you become a danger to people because you're taking up all the resources. And for a small group of people, and that gives you control over it. 
and people will sell it to you. Land, they're not making any more land. So to, to own it, to have rights to it on paper, uh, it gives you a lot of, it gives you a lot of uh, control. That's what it does. It gives you a lot of control. Let me see something here, folks. Yeah, it gives you a lot of control. But uh, I want you to get out there this year and garden from this and from here and get this stuff in the ground, uh, beef up as much of the products you can get in the ground. Uh, if you have to grow vertically because you're having problems with space, do that. Because I, I did some vertical, uh, uh, I made some decisions to go vertical this year with my uh, beans and also with my cucumbers. I'm excited about that, actually. Um, and I want to do more of of, of, of a situation dealing with vertical growing. Um, corn, I wish I, I brought the tray up here and showed you how pretty my corn looked. Growing it indoors is key, folks, uh, for me, because I live in an environment where it, it doesn't have a lot of summer. Um, and when the weather starts to warm up at night, I look for those temperatures to give out 55, 60 degrees and be consistent. Once I see that, I'm I'm ready to um, uh, go ahead and take my corn out and start putting it in into its little areas and feeding it, feeding it heavily because corn does not mind uh, having the food on on uh, right there in front of it. It doesn't mind having it. Uh, corn, ten inches apart. Uh, uh, you know, and I'm growing two different kinds of corn. I'm growing uh, my favorite, uh, Revel, Garden Revel, years ago, uh, he uh, uh, definitely got me hooked on um, peaches and corn. I mean, peaches and green corn. I love that corn. I love that corn, folks. I tell everybody about peaches and cream. It's incredible corn. Uh, and I believe they got a lot of other good corns out there that are sweet like that. I mean, really, they do. Uh, but peaches and cream, I'm hooked on it. I have seen some of the new varieties coming out, and the pictures make you, you know how the pictures are when you look at those ads online, they make you really want to run out and buy that corn and the uh, seeds. Oh. And you want to you want to grab that corn because it looks so great. But you got to remember, when you see those pictures, when you see those pictures, they are grown by absolute professionals. And what do I mean by that? These are men and women who know exactly when, how, and what to do to make plants grow. They do not kid around. They are not amateurs. They are not trying to figure it out. They know what to do. And they grow them in environments where they, they know how to take shortcuts and make things work. I always said this, a person with a vast amount of knowledge will outgrow uh, uh, average gardener every single time or a farmer. They'll do it every single time because they know so many, uh, uh, you know, so many things to do that makes it work for them. They know they've done it. They've done it. They've, you know, um, and I think that that's a big factor. I mean, knowledge is, is key. Um, a lot of the books you get today, about gardening are absolutely some of them are incorrect is I don't all outdoors because they they're telling you what worked with them and they're telling you uh, what they think would work with you but your environment where you live is completely different a lot of times it's completely different the soil is different the temperatures are different uh, the, um, uh, the 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 barometric pressure uh, is different. So, so it's a whole bunch of things that you got to take into account when you when you put a seed in the ground. Make certain that you pay attention to uh, keeping the soil loose so you can make sure those roots get air, oxygen. Now, a lot of people used to stick things in the uh, ground and they were, oh, hello, how you doing, Mr. Price? Hello. All right, Mr. Price. Yeah, Mr. Price there. One of the regulars comes in the room and always say hello and, 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 uh, uh, and, and, and does a, uh, you know, a great job at... Uh, chiming in and, and make certain that he gets involved in the show. I appreciate you. Um, I am so excited, folks. I, I want this, this this cold weather here to be kind of over, with, but I better be patient because it might be a really hot summer. Um, and I'm going to do two gardens, which is 
One will be this spring and summer, of course. And then the other one will be the fall garden. Then the fall garden, I'm going to do all of my greens and everything. And one thing I, I always love to do is I told you uh, uh, a lot of good people here, family. I told you weeds are my friend. Weeds are my friend. Weeds are family. They are welcome in my garden. They keep the insects off my plants and insects prefer them more so than your plants any, at any rate. Uh, and I don't have much trouble out of, out, out of uh, insects anyway in my garden. I just don't. I just don't. I, I just never had. Because once I learned that if I grow the weeds in certain locations, they prefer them, you know. And when I, when I uh, keep the weeds just out of the, uh, out of the area where I'm growing my plants, I'm set. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm, I'm just put them in an area where uh, my plants have a uh, mulch around them and that backs the weeds up off of at least 15 inches is good for me. Uh, and you notice I said good for me because that's what I use. That's the yardstick, which I measure 15 inches away from that plant. Uh, grass clippings are key. That's what I use. I, I But I don't discriminate. I do. When I take that mower through that front wheel drive mower and I take it through, I want to get um what we call uh, grass, weeds, whatever that mold, it chops it up fine. I take the bag off, I dump it around my plants, I back them off around the plant about two to three inches, and then I put 15 inches uh, uh, in circumference around that plant, about two inches thick, and um, the grass will sit there and regulate the temperature. It will also fertilize the soil even further um, it will also uh, uh, not just uh, keep the soil uh, temperature regulated and keep soil fertilized, but it will also help keep moisture around the plants. And you want those those elements working for you, you know, because what happens is when you water your plants and you don't put all this expensive uh, a fertilizer around your plants and you don't put, you know, this stuff here around your plants. And, and then you go out there and you put the hose down around your plant and it washes away your fertilizer. And you have to water more often because the ground that you, you're planting in is bare. I see when I go online, I got to be honest with you folks. When I go online and I see a garden, I see it bare. I realize where they learned that from. I realize where they learned that from. I go up oh, from a book. Oh, they learned it from somebody on YouTube. When I see that, when I see plants growing in bare ground, uh, I know where they got that from. Because when things grow naturally, they do not grow on bare ground. Go in any forest and just look around on the forest and see if you see anything growing out there where the complete forest floor is bare and then these things are growing. Um, yes, I look forward to fresh tomatoes as well, Mr. Price. But I got to tell you, if you put that mulch around them tomatoes, you will get them just as sweet. It actually makes the tomatoes sweet because when you water your plants, you start to dilute the actual flavors because the, 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 um, the tomato gets full of water and it's good for the tomato. But when you get ready to pick, you don't want to water that that day before or, and then go ahead and, and pick the tomatoes when they're full of just water. They'll be good, but they'll be better if you say, all right, I'm picking them Wednesday. So I won't water them Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll pick. After I pick, then I might water. But at that point, I want to make certain that I do a good job at making certain that the plants have all the essence of their genetics there. I don't need it diluted with water. Um, so grass clippings can be very important. If you don't have grass clippings, get some straw. Don't use hay because hay will put a bunch of 
uh, exotic weeds in your uh, in your garden that you won't even believe how, where, or how they got there. And you'll say, wow, these are these tough weeds. My goodness. Because remember, hay is uh, is is a is a you know pulled out of the ground and it's wrapped and folded up and and a lot of weeds are caught up in that. You know, it's like using um, horse manure for fertilizer. The horse digestive tract does not kill all of the weed seeds. Uh, as, as, as you know, when you look at uh, cow, which has four stomachs, which does a pretty effective job of killing most of the weeds. All right, good people. Any questions at all? Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Just see. Cantaloupe. Expensive last year and in the market. I, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, cantaloupes, watermelons, honeydew, all that stuff's expensive. Every last bit of you absolutely correct. The only way you can get summertime, uh, you can get those seeds is online when you go even buy those seeds. Um, tell you another good thing you want to do. Last year, um, when you uh, go and get uh, a melon, and you like it. It's, ooh, this is good, good uh, uh, honeydew melon. I like this honeydew melon. Oh, I like this honeydew melon. Save the seeds. Don't throw the seeds away. I like this cantaloupe. Oh, it was sweet. It was the right size. It was perfect and everything. Save the seeds. I know some of them may be hybrids, but the, the worst case scenario is you're going to grow a melon. It might not be exactly like the parent melon, but it will be a melon. And the seeds cost you how much? Oh, that's right. You got them with the, the melon. So instead of throwing away uh, the skin and the seeds, you take the skins and you put them in your compost pile. You take the seeds and you save them and you see if you can get a decent uh, melon out of it. What do you lose by doing that? Nothing. Nothing. You don't lose anything. Let's see. I do. I do kill. Jerry's. I use uh, salt and soap. Yeah, you can you can kill some weeds. I, I tell you what I did. Uh, I went in on my property. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, probably yesterday. It was a sunny day yesterday. Nice weather and everything. I went out there. And I gave, I got these vines that are on my property. I got a, about three different kinds of vines. They're big, burly vines. They came in here with the uh, leaves that I was getting from some of these, uh, uh, these, uh, these people that do landscaping. And I told him about it. Well, he didn't listen anyway. He, so he said, anyway, stuck in the bag some of the, the vines. And the vines, of course, they do what vines do. Being underneath a pile of leaves, they grew and attached themselves to the ground and and started growing. So when that happened, three, four years go by, I now had absolute crazy vines that were, that, I mean, I didn't have that before. And they were going up in the trees, they were grabbing onto everything and the, the grape vines and everything. They were just going crazy. Now, what did I do to resolve that? Well, I used to try to pull them from the ground. They would always break off because these vines have very deep roots, massive roots, not just regular roots. Um, and uh, have you tons of vines? Okay, I see. I have a tons of. Okay, okay. You need to go look at my video, and you need to look at the one that say "Getting Rid of Vines." Just go look at that, and it'll, it'll straighten you out right there. You'll, you'll be so happy that you can now get rid of these vines. Uh, and so the thing about it is I did a whole thing. It felt really good being able to have some control over what I I, I decide if these vines are going to be allowed to ravish through my property. I got rid of a whole bunch of them. And I know I got rid of them because and it was so easy. It was God, it was easy. Go look at the video when you get a chance. Go look at the video. I'm not trying to say you cut off my show now, but you know, when you get a chance, it'll still be there. And go look, go check it out, family. You're gonna see it and say, Oh my god, I should have been thought of this. Yep. And so that's what I that's what I do. 
I get rid of those those nasty vines. Even the ivory that was going crazy in my yard for years, I now have some say. I now have some say. I do. And and so I wanted that because I mean you should saw, but these vines, you could grab them by the, the thing there, and you could not pull these from the ground. I kid you not. You could not do it. They were anchored in. Um and they were big and burly, and it was a few different varieties. You could see that they were different vines. You could see that. Um, and I got rid of these vines. Folks, it was easy. And like I said, it's a it's 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 all in the video, and you'll see it, and you'll be like, okay. I appreciate that because I have some control now. So I figured if I keep on top of the vines uh, and I kick them all the way back. I don't ever think I'll get rid of all of them because when I looked at the vines, uh, I saw little tiny ones that, you know, that's where they start from. And I didn't get all of those. I got the big ones. Um, another thing you could try using, I'm going to tell you something really works really great for uh, weeds in certain areas is to lay tarps over them. Go to uh, Harbor Freight Tools, get a old cheap tarp about 10 feet by 10 feet. Or, or bigger, uh, and just lay them over certain ground areas where you see these weeds. Cut them down first if you have to, and lay it over there for about three, four weeks. And when that sun hit that area this year, when it hit that area and cook everything under there, you will kill everything. You will kill grass. You will kill weeds. Uh, you will kill. That tarp will kill. And that's how you do that. I can't wait to start um, uh, getting my watermelons out there growing. I can't wait for that because that's going to be a beautiful deal. That's going to be a beautiful deal. Um, there is a show that comes on. It's a lady and a guy. I mostly see a lady doing the show. Uh, I, I love the show. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Just with present time. I mean, when she puts up a video and you come back in 30 minutes, she's got like 3,000 people already watched it. Um uh, or you'll see uh, the live show is just ridiculous, you know, ridiculous the number of people that come in there and they're watching the show. So I looked at her show and I, and I said, um, she's very knowledgeable about what, what she, you know, what she's doing. Uh, looks like a person that has made a lot of mistakes and she learned from it um, because it's only sometimes, you know, failure is not a situation where you just say, I failed and that's it. Failure is only when you stop trying. But when you fail, it's basically a learning experience. Uh, look what I did this week. I'm the morning gardener. I've been gardening for 21 years. I put plants outside and fell asleep on them. When what I should have did was set the timer on this phone. You know how easy that would have been to set a 30 minute timer. And then after that alarm goes off, go out there, pull them back in. I've, I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. No damaged plants. But look how I recovered from that. I went back and looked at everything and I said, okay, I lost a three inch container of peppers. Got it. What to do? How much time do I have to play with? Oh, I got three weeks, three and a half weeks. Got it. Okay. Start the season tonight. Don't play around. Set the temperature to your heat match to 80 degrees instead of 75. Set it to 80. Get these on their way. Use your technique of just dropping the seeds on top of the surface as opposed to digging them in. That will get them up a lot quicker. Instead of seven days, you can get them up about three days. That's going to help you out immensely. And that's how that works. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, good morning, uh, morning God is really going to make us go back to the video. Now, I don't know what video you're referring to, but but it's, I did talk about one dealing with the uh, vine. Uh, morning God is really going to make us go. OK, but you put it in there twice. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, everyone wants to know your uh, painting on those vines. Oh, oh, OK, OK, OK. Folks, I'm going to tell you in just a second. I am. Hoping that the bugs don't take over this year. 
those bugs, those cicadas, those uh, locusts, whatever you want to call them, they only here for one purpose. To put on a Marvin Gaye song, do their business, and die. And that's it. They will produce eggs, drill them into the, the bark of your tree. They will come out, crawl down to the ground, submerge back into the ground, and be done. The minimal amount of damage they're going to do is be out there. And, and in fact, if you do get a whole bunch, I'm sweep them up, put them in your compost pile, et cetera, et cetera. And you're all set. Um, what I'm painting, and everybody keep asking me, what am I, what did I paint on there? Because I can't believe I made that video and, and did not say what I painted onto the uh, plants. I painted on a weed killer. Now, let me tell you why I say it wasn't a bad idea. Listen to me. Clip, clip. Little section, about an inch. I only want to be able to get the the, the, uh, the paintbrush into where that fresh cut is. You got about 30 minutes to get that painted. 30 minutes. Clip, clip, dab, and it's done. The poison will run down to the root, kill the vine, and the vine will be sitting there dead. dead. It will be less damage to anything in your soil because... You just simply dab that one plant as opposed to spraying or anything of that nature because you didn't spray it into the soil. Um, you simply just dabbed it. Uh, let's see. What song? Uh, hmm, I'm not familiar. It got me on that one. Um, yeah, so that's what I did because it was either the weeds or me. And those weeds were evasive. They were strong, powerful weeds, and they were taking over everything in their sight. Uh, did I worry about damaging my soil? I'm always worried about damaging my soil. I won't even take a water hose and turn it onto my soil that's coming from my house because it, it, it has different chemicals in it that kills biology. Um, now, I just went up to 19 people just a second ago, folks. I've never had that many people in here watching me, and I appreciate it because we're all family. We're all family. This is a state of emergency, and we need to grow food. And I'm seeing the uh, I'm seeing the other gardeners now following the, the trend that I that I started talking about months ago. Uh, they some of them have seen my show, and I, I appreciate a lot of them. I see they do the live shows. Um, uh, you know, it's a gentleman. I don't want to say what ethnicity he is, but he is great. Um, um, He's great. He teaches you how to grow things with, uh, um, oh God, I can't think of it. What was that uh, growing technique? We use uh, water and, and fertilizers and aqua uh, 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 japonics or something like that. I can't think of it right this moment. But he is definitely uh, uh, a very good gardener. Definitely his. I work, oh, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, um, now, yeah, the technique that actually, okay, yeah, it does work. Uh, which is on your, on, on your, on your, on my property. I say, I, I say, only way I will use what's on my property. I thank you. I say, that's yes. The only way I use what's on my property. I say, it, it works great. Uh, you don't want as well. Um, kill off. Um, yeah, um, let me just say this. Some trees will send up a root in different areas. If I get a shoot off my apple tree, I will not use that technique on that particular shoot. I'll just simply clip it at, the, at as low as I can get it, clip it. Um, but if it's a stray tree, what I call trash trees that are growing everywhere uh i will take that and cut it off dab and move on and it'll take care of that tree uh that's just starting to grow uh i use it for that and weeds and that's what i use it for but um nature is love. Uh, three things that don't care about thumbs up thank you very much miss miller 
Uh, Sue Miller said, thumbs up. Thank you so much. I, I feel so much love in this room. These people are so, I mean, they're incredible. They're uh, Backyard Gardener. Are you still here? Are you still here? Are you here? Um, uh, Mr. Price, uh, I see you up there. Most of you are very quiet right now, but I'm just saying, get out there and enjoy your life and enjoy uh, this garden season that's coming up. It's going to be incredible, and it's going to be it's going to be different because we just went through a horrific year last year. Now we can get better and stronger. And the food that you grow, additional food that you grow, it's not going to go to waste. Just give it to friends and family and um, churches. That's, that's my plan anyway. Some people want to be you know, like that when they do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but um, the effort that you're putting in, make it count. Make it count, folks. Make certain that you put down uh, the right fertilizers, watering cycle. Um, try to learn as much as you can about the plant that you're growing. But the key to everything, the key to all of this is your soil. Make certain that that's all is right, because that's going to make the difference. You can grow a plant to its uh, its genetic uh, best if you have the right soil. Without the right soil, without soil that is strong and, and, and uh, nutritional, uh, you're not going to get the results. Just one second, folks. I apologize, people. I apologize. All right. Oh, my goodness. Listen to Morning God now. I say, yeah. Yeah, do not give up. Listen to Morning God. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Just the key is in the soil, folks. I learned that a long time ago, and I'll stick by that to the day I leave this planet. The key is in the soil. Alex Cecil Miller, I try to gather as much information as I can from all of the season uh, gardeners and I think I need to just my soil to us adjust my soil to adjust my soil hmm adjust my soil it sounds like a person that um, has some concerns about the the uh, the soil itself and that requires a soil test and that would help a lot of uh, gardeners out if they get a soil test if they having serious issues and they say i don't know why this won't grow um and you know in some soils a lot of soils that we have folks let's just be honest about it the soils are are um uh very poor let's be honest about it a lot of soils around houses are very poor because they, they built the house, they stripped off the topsoil, and they left you with uh, clay. Uh, heck, the uh, the grass will barely grow on these soils. Um, and so, 
um, the grass will barely grow. So what do you do? You find out what you want to do, you find out what type of soil you have, and you go ahead and get things done. Um, because clay soil is a challenge to grow in. And there are ways to grow in clay soil that can improve your success rate. Um, I use mounds. Um, I also uh, use chop and drop to increase the organic matter in the soil. And it really works because I've been doing it for the last uh, four or five years. And the soil now is loose. It's black. It's, and I'm not spending money on um, uh, uh, what they call them things, uh, cover crops and that sort of thing. I just simply use my own grass and weeds and everything is a cover crop and i cut it back let it hit the surface let it lay on the surface from from fall all the way up to spring and it does nothing but fertilize my soil the trash that's left from my plants um whether it be from tomato plants or pepper plants or uh corn stalks or whatever i leave it right there on the ground i leave it right there on the ground and it does nothing but fertilize my ground. And when next year come around, you can, you don't see the corn there, any corn stalks anymore. You don't see uh, much of anything. You just see black soil. All right. Well, thank you very much, folks, for tuning in. This has been the Morning Gardener. And I want to thank you, family, for stopping by and seeing me. Uh, I appreciate it. The day is Wednesday. Can't believe that. Uh, the day is Wednesday. Man. I tell you, but uh, good people, I want to let you know that it's been fun and uh, remember to grow as much as you can this year. This has been the Morning Gardener Show. Thank you very much. And remember to keep on growing. Thank you.